So you know that thing that we all do to make ourselves seem more smart to other people and we really don't do it but it's something that's still something that's caught in the back of our head every once in a while when uh, things come up in conversations you always say oh I read something about that. Well guess what guys nobody reads but you know what your buddy over at Jaybird Gaming's channel Jason right here has actually been doing some reading lately. He's been reading up on some things that he's kind of interested in uh, gaming development, uh, gaming uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff and there's actually a lot of cool information that I've been looking into. And so what I want to do is kind of sit down here with a completely uneducated mind when it comes to this on how video games are created and like the steps taken towards making a video game. I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about how code works or the finance behind what you need to do with gaming. What I'm here to do is kind of just do a dumbed down version of what people do when they want to make a game for the first time. These first time developers, these indie developers, the thought process behind the pattern of what you need to do. And it's actually kind of interesting and kind of helpful for anybody that's looking into this. So I hope that you're interested in this guys. Let's get right into the video guys. The first thing that you need to do is, of course, you need to come up with a story. If it's simple, if it's difficult, you can have a story as simple as Unravel. You can have a simp you can have a story as complicated as the Assassin's Creed series, but you need to come up with a thesis, a story of what you really want the game to be about. That is the first step in everything. So like that aha moment, you're walking into Walmart to buy Ben and Jerry's ice cream because you decided that you're going to be sad today and you think, oh, haha, -ha, the game that people can roll around as bread and try to get to a toaster without getting filthy. That's a game. Somebody thought about it. Millionaire! But yes, you can see how easy it can be and also how difficult it can be if you're trying to get more of a in-depth game compared to a more simplistic game. Next is to think about what kind of art style you want the game to be. There's a lot of different types out there and right now there's actually a real big push for pixel art games and pixel art games is something that I really enjoy when I play them at least and they're cheaper usually and the actual art style behind them is a little bit more thought out than a lot of these other games. A lot of these other games run on these crazy engines where everything is already kind of written for them. All of these games look the same with certain types of people <coughs> but pixel art kind of brings it back to a more simplistic time and it's cool. I really like the art style of pixel art. But then there's art styles like No Man's Sky and there's art styles like GTA and there's art styles like Unravel. It's all up to you what you want the art style to be. But come up with an art style and then that is something that you can kind of push towards your story as well. Next what you really need to do is wonder about software. You, you need software, good software, to create a game or you can take your idea to someplace big. You can take it to like Ubisoft or you can take it to Rockstar, but you have to make a pitch that way. If you want to pitch it to them, again, they're probably hearing a thousand different pitches a day, but if you don't have the uh, brain or the money to actually develop a game yourself, go pitch it to one of these bigger developers. But the thing about that is, is that you need to have some sort of concept art behind it. You need to actually have some sort of art to show. Uh, maybe you can make it in Photoshop, maybe you can just draw it up, but give them something to look at on a board. Give them something to kind of immerse themselves into your brain on what you think this game is going to be like. Because if you just show up and say, I want to make a game where uh, you're a piece of bread and you have to get to a toaster without getting extremely dirty, they're going to be like, you're, you're freaking nuts. But if you draw a piece of toast, get into a toaster, it might get them a little bit more excited. You know what I mean? Also, again, you can get the software yourself and learn how to do it. But there's another thing with making it yourself, and that is code. You don't have to use code in a lot of the software that people give you, but this is the kind of thing with, if you're not really familiar with it, is there's these game making uh, software bundle kind of things. And you can go and you can make a game, but you need to understand that there's a thousand other people that have made a game with that uh, software as well. So a lot of these games will start to look the same. A lot of these games will kind of start repeating themselves because there's only so many real ideas you can do with predetermined software. Or not predetermined, yeah, like pre-written software. And you can't really run with it that much. Whereas if you can learn code, which is kind of completely making up your own engine, basically, you can make a game whatever you want. For example, if a game software says there's these five cars, these five different cars that you can choose from in this game that can drive really fast, you can only choose between those five or you can choose all five but again there's other people out there that choose all five as well whereas if you have information in code if you have um, 
knowledge in code, you can make a thousand cars and you can make them go as fast as you want. That's the difference between that. It's kind of like Squarespace if you're not aware with it. Squarespace is a um, website developer where everything is already pre-made for you, but you can also write code in there to make it a little bit more personal. So codes kind of just make things more personal, so to say. And after all of this is done, you've got this game. Or you got this check from Ubisoft for 26 quadrillion dollars and you got a game that they made for you. Those are kind of the two different ways that I've been reading up on how video games are actually created. Um, I'm kind of interested in this as well. It's not something that I really am going to do probably, but it's kind of just interesting for me to learn this stuff. So I hope that this type of video is interesting for you guys. I'm not trying to um, try to like push this knowledge on you that I really don't know too much about I'm just kind of feeding you guys information on what I've been studying on lately And I hope you like it. I hope you guys leave a like I hope you leave a subscription. It really does help me out guys I will see you all later